Hey guys, it's Red Shadow here and welcome to another video where apparently I still have a chin. Yeah, I did a little bit more shaving to this. I'm kind of looking at it in the camera because it looks a little different than it does when I check it in the mirror, but it's not so bad, I guess. Well, anyway, not here to talk about facial hair. I'm here to talk about how this year's E3 has kind of made a bit of a fool out of me and a bit of a liar out of me. So let me explain why. First of all, I want to say that I had actually, for a week or two, been contemplating a video about basically like a wish list of games for PS4 and Xbox One that I would buy had I one of those consoles, which I have long been saying I am never going to get. No PS4 for me, no Xbox One for me. If I was going to do anything from this current gen, it would have been a Wii U because I really want to play the new Zelda game and there's probably a handful of other Wii U exclusives that would uh, that would be worth paying uh, the price of a Wii U for, especially if it were to go down in price. Um, you know, say in the next year or so. But, that aside, I did a video uh, several months back of, of my like games I would buy for the Wii U uh, if I had one right now. So that's another time, another video. This video, like I said, was supposed to be my chance to talk about stuff like The Witcher 3 and Dying Light and uh, the upcoming Fallout 4. as games that I would want to play uh, if I had one of those consoles. And then E3 happened this week. And it just rocked my world. I'm pissed in a lot of levels. I'm very, very upset in a lot of things. This, on top of some other stuff, more important things than this, obviously video games don't mean anything in the, the big scheme of things. But on top of some other stuff, this had kind of just shit all over my week. Um, the stuff that came out on Monday from the Sony pr press conference. Now this, this mainly, I'm, I'm going to say right now, this mainly focuses around Sony and the PS4. I don't have any desire for an Xbox One, but because of a couple specific announcements, I think that the armor that I had built around myself, uh, where I said I was just not going to have anything to do with this current generation, it finally managed to get chipped away at a little bit, and the structure is, is no longer sound. It's even to the point where I've started to think about tax returns of next year, I should have a pretty decent one. So a PS4 and a handful of these really, really good games is starting to look really appealing because of the, the things that I heard at E3, or from E3. I didn't watch any of it. God, I probably would have been a wreck if I was actually watching it live. It's so silly, too, because this is E3 at a time when they're not dealing really at all with anything for the 360, the PlayStation 3. And I got more excitement and exhilaration as well as pure disappointment and just rage at this E3 of all of them. I've paid attention to E3s at least since the late 90s when uh, your EGMs and PSMs and Game Pros and all those kind of magazines would put out their E3 issues and I would look at all those games that were announced and I'd be like, wow, this is like Christmas in, in June. Anyway... Uh, staying on track here. So three things were announced at the Sony press conference on Monday that really screwed me over. So let's start in the order of the ones in which I heard them. The first thing that was announced that really got my attention, and I saw it on Facebook and later watched stuff about it on YouTube, was The Last Guardian, the new game from Team Eco, the people behind the PlayStation 2 games, 2, Eco and Shadow of the Colossus, which if you've watched anything that I've done or know me at all, you know that Shadow of the Colossus is my second favorite game of all time. And I've been waiting in baited anticipation since 2007 or 2008, whenever The Last Guardian was announced as coming to the PlayStation 3. Seven or eight years ago, I have been waiting and waiting. Now, wasn't the reason why I bought a PS3. It was one of the reasons that I bought a PS3. But mostly I bought a PS3 because of uh, The Last of Us 
and GTA 5's online mode, knowing that I would get to play that for free on my PS3, and eventually knowing I would get uh, the, uh, the Last Guardian. Well, I got The Last of Us, and I got GTA 5, and I have several other games that I've played, and I love my PS3 a lot, other than the fact that the HDMI output went out. It was my main console for a year. And then The Last Guardian just seemed to kind of fade away and fade away. And a lot of us hopeful fans were still trying to keep it alive. And I read every article that ever popped up on IGN and GameSpot, stuff that was ever reported on it on uh, YouTube. I, I watched all of it. I was always eager. We're going to get some more. We're going to have that. And then it was announced at E3, Last Guardian, being re-revealed as a PS4 title. The 4. Meaning that Team Eco missed an entire console generation, about 8 or 9 years worth of, of time in which to put one fucking game on the PS3, and it gets pushed to the PS4. It just broke my heart. It was like, are you kidding me? I've been waiting so long for it. Now, I understand. I've, I've heard a little bit of stuff that says that things that they were trying to do in this game just weren't working smoothly with the PS3 architecture. So all I can say is, not as a game designer or developer or a programmer of any sort, just as somebody who would like to be hopeful that it could be this easy... Why couldn't you have sacrificed some of those things and brought us something? Because you could have done something amazing with a game on the PS3 anyway and taken some of those other concepts and pushed them over there. If The Last Guardian was, was going rough, maybe have another team or somebody work on something for the PS3 while you had it. You had years to work on it. You knew what its, you knew what its limitations were and what your capabilities were. Why couldn't you have produced something for it? Well, the Last Guardian will live on. It'll go to the PS4. So I was super fucking depressed when I heard that shit. I was like, well, goddamn. Probably the last thing I really had to look forward to for the PS3 was gone. To a console that I had held steadfast to that I would not buy. That I had no interest in. I wasn't going to do digital content and 50 gig downloads and day one patches and on-disc DLC and all that bullshit. I wasn't going to do any of that. I wasn't going to be a bug tester for all these games, which a lot of us have already been, because even the 360 and PS3 were plagued with that kind of stuff. But I didn't want to take it to the next level and give Sony and Microsoft all this extra money to just do it all over again. So I was resigned to it. I was like, The Last Guardian is gone. Psh, ether. Psh, gone. And then the next thing came out. The next big news from E3 and from the Sony press conference. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Going to the PS4, also possibly to other uh, consoles and platforms. Maybe it'll be a PS4 timed exclusive. Maybe it'll come out for all of them at the same time. Whatever the case may be, a remake of my all-time favorite game, the only thing that supplants Shadow of the Colossus at the top of my list, you know, Shadow of the Colossus here, Final Fantasy VII here, and they're going to make a remake, finally, after all these years, all these teases, all these, now you can buy Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation Store, and now you can buy it on Steam, and you can get it from Square, and you can do it from here. Now it's going to be available on the PS4. Great. All these things that seem to dangle the carrot in front of us. I don't know if that's what they wanted. It's to just see if people would still buy all these other iterations of it. I own for PS1 and I own it from Square. I don't have it. I don't have the direct Steam version. I have Final Fantasy VIII through Steam. But I actually got the digital version of Final Fantasy VII from the Square Enix store <clears throat> when they inadvertently put it up on the store like a week early or something. So I paid for it and had it, <clears throat> excuse me, and then they yanked it and they emailed everybody who bought it and they said, we're, we're sorry, we apologize, this was early, we didn't mean to. For those of you who did buy it, here's your money back and you get the game. I was like, 
Thank you, Square Enix. Thank you. I got the game for free on that. It was only like $12, I think, when it came out, but it was really awesome for them to, to cover up their error um, and give me the game for free. The only thing that I don't have right now that I really do want is a PC boxed version of Final Fantasy VII, like one of those with the trapezoidal shaped box or whatever. That's just for collecting purposes, though. But obviously, I, I have done a video, I think maybe just one, maybe multiple parts, I'm not sure, for Final Fantasy VII. It's, it's simply my favorite all-time game, and I've never even beat it. I've seen the end, but I've only made it to the final level of the boss fight with Sephiroth, where I get my ass handed to me every time, because I'm not the, the greatest RPG player. And maybe that's why this remake first dis like frustrated me, uh, and the more I read about it, 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 it had the ability to frustrate me, because they're talking about, should we change the battle style? I actually think I would like to see them do sort of a more active or action RPG like battle style for it and let let me run around as cloud and swing my buster sword and and not just stand back and wait because I can always go back and play Final Fantasy 7 in the traditional JRPG standard but with this one if they're going to up they're going to up like redo the graphics completely Final Fantasy 15 level type graphics change maybe even some stuff to the story I'm fine with that because like I said I always have the classic to go back to whenever I want but I want to play this remake and I want to see what they do with it I want to see if it can pull me in they better be on point with that fucking music if they want to symphony it up and orchestra and, and make it really really good but I don't want them to change the core theme songs and the core anything songs there's potential, sure, for this to suck balls. Uh, it could be really, really bad if they try to do too much with it. But I'm going to want to play it. So that was the second thing that hit me. The, the follow-up game to my second all-time favorite game, Shadow of the Colossus, is coming to the PS4. A remake of my favorite game of all time coming to the PS4 and other platforms, apparently. And then the third and final thing which actually didn't disappoint me as much because this game has its P Sony connections, but it's also going to the PC. But this was another one of those things. Okay, Last Guardian I was waiting on. I I eventually assumed it would come out. So I was just waiting for years. Final Fantasy VII the Remake, it had been bantied, bantered, bandied, bandied about for a long time, but I wasn't really sure it was ever going to happen. This third one was one of those that... I had absolutely no idea that it would happen, but I was waiting for it. So it was kind of like the two things put together. That's Shenmue 3. It was announced that a Kickstarter would be starting that moment at the press conference for Shenmue 3. And that Sony would be helping to fund the development of it, but the Kickstarter would also be open for it. They set a goal of $2 million, which was broke somewhere between six and eight hours it reached its goal of two million right now it's somewhere around 3.3 million so it's almost doubled it in less than a week by the time we get to the end of the 30 or 31 days of this kickstarter i hope that it will have pushed to the four or five million dollar the stretch goals i think go up to five million dollars for certain aspects of the game now if you don't know what kickstarter is it's just a a platform that allows game developers and other kinds of developers to produce a project idea and put it out there to see if the community wants to fund this. So instead of saying, hey Sony or hey Sega or hey Microsoft or hey somebody, we're making this game, do you want to help fund it and you can publish it and you can give us money for it and then you can share in the money that's made on it. That's probably a really simplistic way of, of <laughs> describing the game making process. But then they make the game and they put it on the shelves and then they hope that people will buy it and recoup the operation you know expenses and advertising and all that crap and then make extra money make a profit off of it kickstarter and indiegogo and gofundme and all these other little things take whatever their product is and say here's our here's our idea read it on the screen see what we're talking about here's the people working on it here's thoughts and ideas and 
Maybe here's a demo of what we're working on. Would you be interested in this? You pledge to fund this product. We meet these milestones and these stretch goals. We will make this product. When the time frame on the Kickstarter or whatever is up, we'll take your money, and when the game comes out, we'll send it to you. So they actually kind of make their money first, and it's kind of scary, yes, but you have to have some sort of trust in uh, who's behind each of these projects, which in my opinion, Yu Suzuki is here to do Shinmu 3. I trust him to do the right thing. I love the first Shinmu game. Second game I haven't played yet. I started last year sometime to play through the first so that I could play the second, and as usual, I was distracted. I didn't finish my playthrough of the first one, so hopefully I will this year sometime. But I trust in Yu Suzuki. I loved the first Shinmu. It's my favorite Dreamcast game. It was an amazing game at the time, and it blows me away that it's kind of created a lot of ideas that are prevalent in gaming today. I don't know that it was the game that created QuickTime Events, but it was the first game that I ever played that had QuickTime Events that I, I'm aware of. Uh, and that's not necessarily looked on very well today in games, QuickTime Events, but it worked for that one really, really well. Anyway, uh, Shenmue may be considered sort of a niche game, but it's obvious that the community, the gamers out here, wanted Shenmue 3. Now, I don't know that it's going to finish off the series, or if it does really well, they make sure that there's room for a fourth and a fifth and yada yada yada. Uh, just to have Shenmue 3 at all, yes, hell yes. The only thing that I can think of right now that I want to see come back at this point, now that we've seen Last Guardian, a Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Shenmue 3 getting funded, is Mega Man Legends 3, which was 60 or 70 percent done for the 3DS a couple years ago, and then it got shit canned. Fuck that noise. But if that came back, I'd want to see it at least on the Wii U so I could play it, or on one of these next gen consoles like PS4. Because if I haven't already said it yet, if I haven't already made myself clear, Last Guardian, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Shenmue 3, even though I'll, I've already pledged to back the physical PC version of Shenmue 3. It's only going digital to the PS4, but uh, I could buy it for the PS4 down the road. All these things made me say, wow, Sony, you really knocked me for a loop. You kicked my ass big time with this. I'm ready to, to give hard consideration to buying a PS4 next year and not only the games I mentioned, but some of the other ones, like I said before, Fallout 4, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt would be a definite pickup. Dying Light is one I've wanted to, to play. Um, <clears throat> Batman Arkham Knight, I could play that now. Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, and some of the ones that work cross-platform, including even to prior generation of consoles, but like now I could hold off and get Dragon Age Inquisition for the PS4. Um, and probably several others. I'm I'm kind of looking at this on Game Facts, and I'm I'm just, eh. Uh, really, the, the point of it all is, it took the games to make me want a PS4. Some games that were near and dear to my heart. They're going to open my door to this this one console in this generation. Not counting the Wii U, sorry, but this one console from the two big guns. That's probably going to get my money so that I can have a little piece of the action here. And then let's just hope like heck that some of the other things I've been wanting to see, like a Red Dead sequel, a Bully sequel, and, and a handful of other things, that they will get released on the PS4 so that I don't have to say, oh god, I have to get a PS5 if I want to play those? Eh, hell with that. If I get a PS4 and a Wii U, I guarantee you they'll be the last game consoles of current or new stuff that I will ever get. I can't say that I wouldn't buy old consoles, a PS2 to update or like to to get a new PS2 to replace the one I have now that's getting old, a PS1 that I'd like to have. I'd really like to have a PS1 by itself, an Xbox original one by itself, even a GameCube would be pretty awesome. But I will never buy any more consoles if and when I buy a PS4 and a Wii U. I've got to call it quits. And I will be very, very selective. With the PS4, I won't be collecting, you know, like I do with all these other consoles. I won't be buying 
you know, a hundred co- or a hundred copies, a hundred different games, just to say, oh, I have a PS4 collection. Ugh. No, I'll just be getting the games that I really want to play, and that'll be that. And anyway, I think that's that for this video. E3, goddamn you. You just freaking ruined my whole entire week in, in both bad and good ways. But in the end, they always say who won E3. Was it Sony? Was it Microsoft? Was it Nintendo? Was it the Indies? Was it the PC? Was it these certain companies like Bethesda or Ubisoft? No. In the end, the smart of us all know that the gamers are the ones who win every E3. And I thought I was going to be a big loser after everything that I heard on Monday. Now I feel like, yeah, maybe I will be winning a little bit. I'll have to wait. Probably eight to nine months, but I don't care. I've already waited a year and a half, so it ain't no big deal. Okay, anyway, I'm going to stop talking and shut up now. Thanks for watching. Anybody out there who saw E3 stuff, are you excited for anything? Um, there's a lot more than what I mentioned that looked really, really cool. I, I, I want to play No Man's Sky really, really bad, and I have to admit there was another game that came out. I, I won't be able to find the name of it anytime soon, but it was Horizon New Dawn or, or some something like that. Looked pretty neat. And there's lots of other stuff. Anyway, share your thoughts. Uh, if there's anything about E3 that you were into, any of these games I mentioned that you know, you're into or you're not going to play, yada, 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 all that fun stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.